Hey, what is going on guys? So day one at Computex today and I had a chance to swing by the Cooler Master booth to see what they've been up to. And they had a pretty interesting prototype here which they are planning to release towards the end of this year. More on that in just a moment, but first a quick message from MSI for making this trip possible. Want a dope new rig without going broke? Well, MSI has got you covered. Check out their latest MSI gaming PC setups and learn how you too can build an incredible new gaming rig that's light on your wallet. See the link in the description below to get started. Okay, so when I asked Cooler Master to show me their new products for Computex this year, this was one of the products they were keen to talk about. This is a thermoelectric all-in-one CPU cooler. It's just a prototype, so that's why it looks a little bit rough around the edges cosmetically, but functionally we can expect a similar result from the end product. You'll notice that there's two sort of radiator looking blocks here, and one is the radiator, which is the 140mm radiator at the front, and what looks like another 280mm rad at the back is actually the thermoelectric cooler. So the liquid is taken from the pump block, sent through to the 140mm rad, then over to the TEC, and then back to the CPU block. So the basics of a thermoelectric cooler is that there's an acting current across two conductors, where one junction gets hotter and the other one gets cooler. So I'm assuming that's what we're seeing here, but there may be a little bit more going on. One Cooler Master rep said that the coolant warming actually had a positive effect on the potential difference, but I can't confirm anything about that yet. So in the case of the TEC, it appears that the cold plate section is at the top and that's in contact with the water and then the heatsink portion is the component that's getting hotter from the acting current. So this massive heatsink here which basically populates a full 280mm rad is then being cooled by the 140mm fan directly behind it. So the big question is what is the actual performance benefit of something like this over a traditional AIO? And Cooler Master quoted about a 5 to 7 degree improvement over your standard 280 rad. So that 5 to 7 degree improvement might be tempting for a few of you but there are quite a few drawbacks that some of you might notice right away. The first one is the power draw that's required to actually create the thermoelectric effect and this alone could outweigh the benefit of a slightly cooler CPU. The second one is that mounting is obviously going to be quite problematic with the current prototype. Now back to that massive heatsink because I said power draw could be uh, quite a big issue here and I really hope that the size of that heatsink isn't an indicator of how much power is actually being used here. At the end of the day, this is just a prototype and you know a bit of a demo for people to come and have a look at, but I really would like to see uh, the finished product uh, at the end of the year be one uh, unified solution. So basically I would like to see uh, the radiator portion of the AIO and the TEC portion of it be combined into a 280mm uh, sort of solution there. This would completely eliminate all of the issues with uh, mounting and definitely would be a lot more attractive to consumers. Now you'll see a little LCD below the CPU water block there and that's displaying the current coolant temperature of the loop. So when I was on the show floor, it was about 25 degrees inside the exhibition hall and the coolant temp reading was about 20. So you're gonna get about five degrees below ambient temperature if the loop is just sort of sitting at idle. But I really would have loved to see this on a working demo with maybe a CPU stress test or something like that. So overall, a really cool concept. Uh, I would love to see this hit the shelves in a more user-friendly package and hopefully a user-friendly price as well. Moving on, Cooler Master also showed off uh, some new pump block designs, which you guessed it, more RGB with a couple more variations. And these compared with the new RGB fans, which actually look pretty good. There were also these transparent pump blocks here with a spiral effect on the inside, which personally I wasn't really a fan of, but each to their own. They also showed off their new premium thermal compound, which they claim has a thermal conductivity of 11 watts per meter Kelvin, which is about double the industry standard of about five, but it's still a little bit below Thermal Grizzly's Cryonaut rated at 12.5. Either way, it'd be really cool to see a premium thermal compound like this paired with their more premium AIOs. So overall, not a ton of new announcements or innovation by Cooler Master here, but they did announce a new case here on the show floor, which may seem familiar to a few of you, and that's the C700M. And we will be taking a look at this one in a future video. Otherwise, guys, a huge thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe for more Computex coverage coming up later this week, and I'll see you all in the next one.